Welcome to this week's Sunday sit down chat. It's going to be a little different this week. Um, and that is because I don't really have many notes about this topic. So I might ramble and jump around and have tangents a little bit more than normal. And hopefully the mic is holding up today. Um, so this is a topic that I've wanted to talk about for a while. Um, the, the basic idea, the, well, let's start from the beginning. The, the reason I started to think about this in terms of a topic for a Sunday sit-down video is that I saw somewhere that uh, Quentin Tarantino, famed director of quite a few um, well-acclaimed movies, um, he, at, at some point in his career, he said, I want to make 10 movies. Um, and that's it. Uh, 10 is my number. He picked 10 as the number. Uh, I, I don't know, I haven't read too deep into that if he had a specific reason for choosing 10, but from what I have read, the idea is that he uh, he set that goal because he wanted to uh, to make 10 great movies. And so he wanted to get, he said, you know, he didn't choose one or two, and I, which I understand. He, I think he had a, a number of ideas that he had a, he didn't just want to make like one great movie and then call it quits. But he also didn't want to make like 30 or 40 movies that range in quality from good to bad and then some are great and some are not so much. He wanted to really focus his time and energy and his career, his entire career on making 10 great movies. And obviously that's highly subjective as to whether or not his movies are great or not. I don't want to get into that today. I'm sure you have different opinions about that. But I read that and I was like, it really resonated with me. I, I really liked that he, um, you know, sometimes people say that like more is more is better, that, that if, you, if you do direct 50 movies in your career and five are truly great, then that's wonderful. That's, that's great. But I like that he, he decided to focus instead and say, I, I just want to make 10. I, there are so many movies out there. Um, I don't, I don't want to, I, I just want to make 10 great ones for, for people. And I think that for his career, that's going to be over the span of about 20 years. And so I read that this really resonated with me because that kind of has been my company philosophy for a long time now. It's essentially the Days of Wonder model, which is that uh, Days of Wonder, uh, most known for Ticket to Ride, um, they don't make many new games. They make maybe one new game a year, and they support their older games with uh, like spinoffs, like there are a bunch of different Ticket to Ride spinoffs. Um, and some of their games, like there's some games of theirs that I don't even remember because they didn't take off. They they put a lot of time and effort into them, but they didn't take off. But they were intended to, uh, because they only they focus all of their efforts on maybe one new game a year. Um, the the most recent one is called The River. I haven't played it yet. But I when I read about that model when I was starting Stillmeyer Games, I really liked that model. I I didn't like the idea of making a ton of games and hoping that a few of them were good. Um, my goal was to make just maybe one great game a year. Again, great is highly subjective. I'm sure some of you like some of my games and don't like other ones, but, uh, but my intention was to make one, maybe one great game a year, um, as a designer. Cause originally when I started out with my company, I was, I was the designer of all of our games. Um, and over time, uh, this goal has become, uh, even more important in my opinion, because there are just so many games released by publishers and designers every year. Uh, I think we're up to many thousands of games, maybe five or 6,000 new releases every year. And, uh, and there are definitely pros to that. I love the sheer amount of creativity that, that people are generating these days. Like there's so much innovation in gaming, uh, whether it's, whether it's the, the mechanisms or the themes or the, the art or the components. So much innovation. I, I, I absolutely love that. Um, but there are just so many. Uh, and it, it's hard for me as a gamer to even choose which games I want. And I see more and more great games that, uh, that kind of fall to the wayside because they're just there's so many that come out the next week or the next month. Um, and that, that worries me long term as, as a gamer, as a designer, and as a publisher. And so I wanted to talk about that topic today. The... the Kind of a really the topic that I wanted to talk about is the hypothetical situation of what if uh, what if I only designed 
uh, 10 total games in my lifetime. Uh, designed for the purpose of publishing them. Like I've designed many games that have not been published. But uh, and it really, I mean, the topic is a little bigger than that. It's not just me. But I wonder if what if this is an admirable goal for other designers to consider as well? Because there are, there are prolific designers out there. And I highly re respect what they're doing. Um, and I, and, and with many of those designers that I'm, that I'm thinking of, I don't want to really name names here, but there are some very prolific designers. And I think, uh, for many of them, they have like maybe three or four games that have, uh, that have really taken off and really been acclaimed and, and bring joy to a lot of people. And then they have a lot of games that don't do that, whether it's because of the design or the publisher, the art, there are many different factors that go into that. Um, and I respect that these designers, especially these designers who, like, their job is just to design games. That's their full-time job. They need to design games so that they have a steady royalty check coming in from probably a variety of different publishers every month or every quarter um, so that they can make a living. Like, that, that's what they do for a living. They, they, it's difficult for those designers to just design one game a year. Um, that probably would not be sustainable for them. But so so I, I want to talk about this respectfully to those designers, but also I just want to talk about the bigger topic of of what if um, we gave ourselves limits, lifetime limits, self-imposed. I'm not imposing this on you. I'm imposing this on my on myself or considering the idea, a self-imposed limit on the number of games you design and what that does for um, the, the, the psychological element of me as a designer as I approach those designs, because it's similar to what I said for Tarantino. If, if I have, if I don't have a goal like that, um, I, I can still have a goal of designing a great game every time I design one, but, uh, there's, there's a certain limitation I feel where if I think, okay, I'm only designing 10, 10 games. If I'm only designing 10 games to publish over the course of my career, not only do I want them to be great, but I want them to be highly unique and differentiated from each other. I want to take my time with them, um, which is essentially what I've done so far. I, I don't want to rush them. Um, I want to get them right. I, I want them to be, I want each one to truly be special and almost fall into different categories of games. So looking at my, my, and it was a little bit about me, but there's some other things I'm, I'm going to bring into this discussion. But in, looking at my my resume so far, my portfolio so far, I designed Viticulture. It's a worker placement game, very Euro-y worker placement game. Um, then I designed Euphoria, which is also a Euro game, uh, but it, it uses dice as workers. It's also a worker placement game. So th there, as as I, even as I look at this, there are definitely patterns in my games. Charterstone is also a worker placement game. Um, and it, uh, but it's a legacy game. So the main thing about Charterstone is that it is a legacy game, a game that has permanence as a feature. I designed Scythe, which is much more of an engine building game. Um, Scythe was probably, well, actually, no, Euphoria was the, my, dipping, the first time I dipped my toes into creating a world for a game. Um, and Scythe was the next step for a completely different world. Um, and so, I, and, and now I'm working on a, a two games: a civilization game and an open world exploration game. Um, and so, there certainly are even among these games, there are certainly similarities. Uh, my my design philosophy is is consistent throughout most of these games. And as I said, that I mentioned worker placement three times among those games. Um, but so that that's a total of that's six games. So that would only leave four more for me to des design if I set this goal of ten games to design and publish in my lifetime. Um, oh, and I also want to say uh, I absolutely don't want to take for granted that I have some published games, and you might be listening to this as a designer wishing that you had just one published game, and I I totally. Uh, can, I, I, I just I don't want to take for granted that that I have this opportunity and that you may not have had that opportunity yet. And so uh, me talking about designing and publishing 10 games may be really disrespectful to you. And I, 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 to, I, I genuinely don't mean that as, as a, a disrespect to those who are struggling to get their first design published. Um, 
I, I guess this video in a way is really geared towards maybe designers who have a few games published and are thinking about what to do next. Um, uh, yeah, I know, I know I'm rambling here. I'm just jumping around. That's, that's what Sunday sit downs are for sometimes. Uh, one of the, so one of the reasons this topic keeps coming up in my notes, I know I haven't talked about it in public very often, is uh, it was first for Tarantino. Um, then I, I heard an interview with one of my favorite designers, Alexander Pfister. And Alexander Pfister, he designed Mombasa. He recently designed uh, Black, uh, Blackout Hong Kong or just Blackout. Um, one of my favorite games, Isle of Sky. He designed Broom Service. But he, as acclaimed as, as Alexander Pfister is, he doesn't have that many games. And he was talking about this in the interview. He said, um, I, I think he said that early on in his career, he, he tried to make a number of games. And then, uh, kind of a, a similar trajectory to Stillmeyer Games, at, at similar times too, he saw the sheer number of games putting out there. And he was like, I, I just want to put out a great game every year or so. Um, I, I, I don't want to dilute uh, the pool any further than it is with, uh, with uh, he wasn't speaking about other games as mediocre, but he was saying, I, I don't want to design games just to design more games. Every time I design a game, I want it to be, I want to put a ton of time and attention and love and care and, uh, and data and playtesting into it, and I want to make it great. Um, and I, so I heard that, I made a note about it, because I, it was, it was kind of reaffirming to hear that from a designer that I highly respect. I would love to publish a game actually from Alexander Pfister. Um, but I, I like that he was thinking about that along those lines as well, where he, he doesn't want to pump out five designs a year. He wants to design one game maybe every two years. I think that's his current pace recently and, and have it be a subjectively great game. Um, Another side of this too is that I am a public. I'm not just a designer. I'm a publisher, and the the most recent games that we published were not designed by me. There was My Little Scythe earlier this year, and there was Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig, uh, which came out just about a month ago. Those are the only two new games that Stillmire Games put out this year, which was actually a big jump because in the past uh, we've released one game a year. Um, that was our that was our pace for the last few years. One game, yeah, one game a year um, since 2013. And this year we doubled it. We, we doubled it. And uh, I, I think one of the reasons that we've survived and in many ways thrived is that uh, even though we are not publishing many new games, we are reprinting our old games and supporting them um, through customer service, through promos, through expansions, um, through continued convention support, through play and wins. Um, there are many different ways to, to continue to support your games after they're released. But I think sometimes publishers forget that. And maybe they don't forget it, maybe they just don't talk about it. That you don't need to have a dozen new games every year to do well. Uh, if you have a few great games each year, um, and maybe some that take off, some that don't take off. We've certainly have have had that happen within Stillmeyer Games. Um, that uh, that you can still support those older games. Those older games still exist and uh, and can become beloved by people. And one of the reasons I think old games and old games being like a game older than even just one year can continue to survive and thrive is because people already know them. Um, the games in my collection back here, I know the vast majority of them. It's not hard for me to get those games to the table. And even though it's exciting to get that new game to the table, it's easier to get those games to the table, which makes them easier to share with other people, makes them easier to spread. Um, so I, I, I never, as a publisher, I never want to forget about our current catalog of games. Um, and, and that, I think, is sometimes maybe a little bit easy to forget um, as we get excited about the next new thing. Uh, so that's something I try to keep in mind when I think about how many games we release each year. Uh, for a while now, I've, I've had the plan of probably publishing three games in 2019, but that might just be two. Um, I, I've been thinking about that a bit recently. We, we will have a, a new game announcement in January um, for a game that we'll release later in 2019. 
And actually, we'll have a soft announcement next week. So soft announcement about that game coming up in just a couple days. But, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been thinking about instead of doing three. Like, we've been on pace to do three games next year. But that doesn't mean we have to release them all. I could release just two next year and then maybe one in early 2020 and then put out another game in 2020. Uh, I, I want to spread these out. I, I, I really like that idea of spreading I, I, these games out so that um, every month we aren't contributing to the cult of the new. That that maybe uh, maybe we're we're doing that maybe twice a year, once or twice a year. Um, the last uh, actually, there are two other other examples that came up here, and I'll, I'll link to some of these things below. I, I can't remember what the Fister interview was, but I think I have a link to this other one. Uh, Steve Jackson Games reported in July that uh, that they were not they were going to try to focus on fewer new products and go deeper on their existing product lines, their existing brands. Um, Steve Jackson Games is most known for Munchkin and Ogre. And I think, uh, yeah, those are the main two, Munchkin and Ogre. They have a few other ones too. But they were kind of saying, you know, we're, we're going to go deep on these games. We're going to really focus on these games, these brands, instead of going wide with a bunch of new games, some of which will be hits and some, some of them won't be hits. Uh, so again, I really like that strategy of going going deep on a few games, a few brands, maybe one new release a year. Um, and uh, let's see, the, the most recent one, another article I read was uh, by a guy named Nick Bentley. Nick wrote about this concept as well, about how uh, he, he board games are sometimes viewed as commodities. Let's see how Nick said it here. I have the article here. Um, Nick works for North Star Games. Um, he was talking about how Coolman or not has had has not met their projections. They've um, they made few, less money this year. And Nick talks about this concept about uh, the idea of making just a few great things instead of a lot of things that are maybe not as great that don't that where the quality suffers because you're trying to just make a ton of games. Um, yeah, Nick's article is really good. I'll, I'll link to it in the in the uh, in the description below. But uh, I don't know. I'll bring the, I'll bring this back to me a little bit because it's well. I want to go both ways here. Um, the first way is that if any of this resonates with you, whether you're whether you're a designer or a publisher, um, I wonder if you might consider publishing uh, in 2019, publishing equal to or less than. The number of games you published this year, um, and I'm saying this to a designer or a publisher, uh, rather than growing uh, in terms of the, the in terms of quantity, instead focus on growing in terms of quality and depth. And I wonder if a lot of people did that, if a lot of designers and a lot of publishers did that, including me as a designer and Stonemaier Games as a publisher. Um, I wonder if, uh, if the, the game industry as a whole might be a little better off just a little bit, it might be just marginal because again, as I said, it, it is great that we have the sheer amount of innovation. I love that anyone can be a designer and a publisher these days. Thanks to Kickstarter. Anyone can do that. I, I love that. Um, but for those of us who are already entrenched in the business and designing and publishing multiple games, what if we thought about uh, not going, uh, not having, not increasing quantity in 2019 as compared to 2018? Um, and I wonder what this will do for our psychology, similar to Tarantino and his 10 movies. Um, and instead of uh, leaving the door open for endless possibilities of games, Instead, picking and choosing your absolute best work and focusing on that and giving that all your time and attention. Uh, that's my, my idea that I'm throwing out there to the world. I'm not saying that this is, I'm not even saying that this is a good idea because I, I, who am I to say that this is, that it's better for you to design uh, two games instead of four games next year? Who, who am I to, to say that you as a publisher are going to be more successful if you publish uh, three games instead of, instead of 10 games next year? Who am I to say that? But I can say it for myself. I can I can say that for myself that uh, I want 
it, and, and this is what I've done so far. So it's I'm essentially continuing to do what, what I've done in the past. Um, that I want to continue to focus all of my time and energy, uh, all of my design time and energy, at least the time that I'm not spending running my business in other ways. I want to spend them designing uh, great, unique, innovative games that that bring joy to a lot of people. Um, and and I think for me to meet that goal, I cannot design and publish a ton of games. It's got to be limited. The last game that I published was Charterstone. That was that came out in um, in twenty. 2017, I think now, right? Yeah, 2017. And so I, I did not design and publish any games in 2018. I, I was a co-designer on The Rise of Fenris, and I helped develop the other games that we we published. But I didn't design any new games this year, or didn't publish any new games of my own this year. Um, and so, uh, I mean, this is something that I'm doing. So I'm, it's not really even fair for me to say that this is a, a goal of my own because it already is a goal. I already am doing it. I guess the new thing for me would be if I said to myself, Jamie, you've, you've got 10 games. You've got to make this work. You've got to do your – you are limited to, to designing and publishing 10 games. Um, and what that, would, what that would do for me as a designer. Uh, and I think it would be – I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not locking myself into it yet, but it has been on my mind quite a bit for quite a while now, as to uh, what that limitation, what that constraint might do for me as a designer in a really good way, and what that might do for um, how that might contribute to the game industry in general. Um, if if instead of me spreading out a ton of games that might be good or bad over many many years, if I uh, if I really continue to just focus on trying to make the best games that I can and limit that to 10. I think really what I think the limit to 10 might do the most is it might um, it might prevent me from falling back on old habits. Uh, for example, worker placement. I, I don't think worker placement is necessarily a habit, but for a while it was like my go-to mechanism. Uh, and even recently with Charterstone, it was, you know, it that was the core mechanism in Charterstone as well, uh, because I'm very comfortable with worker placement, and I like exploring different areas of worker placement. But uh, by giving myself this limitation, like it feels like I shouldn't do another worker placement game if that's the case, uh, because if I only have if I only have six more games to design and publish, and really four after the Civilization game and the Open World Exploration game, then I want to do really unique, special things with those games. Um, and a worker play, doing another worker placement game would not be unique within my portfolio unless I did something totally innovative with worker placement, um, which I think is pretty rare these days, but it happens. There are some designers that, that do some really cool innovative stuff with worker placement. Uh, the, the, uh, what's the, the series of game, like the, uh, Raiders of the North Sea, like that designer is doing cool, innovative stuff with worker placement every time he designs a game, which I think is really awesome. Anyway, I'm sure many of you have tuned out by now. This has been a, a weird rambling one, uh, but I wanted to get this topic out there. I wanted to talk about it, it um, and and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, I, I hope this has not offended anyone. It, it really has not been my intention to, uh, to disparage anyone who's designing or publishing a ton of games. While that's not a strategy that I particularly think is good for Stillmeyer Games and not something that we're going to do or that I'm going to do as a designer, uh, if that's working for you and it's bringing joy to a lot of people, uh, keep on doing it. But uh, but I, I guess I wonder a little bit if uh, on a personal level and an industry-wide level, if designing fewer, designing and publishing fewer great games is going to be better for everyone involved in the industry, the designers, the gamers, the publishers, um, the, the stores, the retailers, um, if that will be better in the long run for all of us, maybe. I I I, sli I am slightly inclined to believe that, but uh, but I respect your opinion too. If you if you believe differently, uh, so I guess I'll end with this. I mean, I'd love to hear your opinions, but I'd also like to know for the design the designers who are listening to this, if you could only if you set a self imposed limit to only design and publish uh, or design and have published. 10 games in your lifetime. Uh, a, where are you right now on that track? And B, uh, 
uh, what would your remaining games be? Like, what are the categories that you haven't hit that you want to hit? Or would you want to go deeper in categories that you've already um, designed? Or do you have no idea? Like, I look at my final four games and I have I have ideas that I that I brainstormed, but I don't know if I only had four games left. I don't know if I would use those games for those final four slots. I don't know, but it's kind of exciting me for for me to think about it that way. That I that I that maybe I only have four slots remaining, and that that I have these twenty game ideas to choose from, and maybe some other ones that will come along in the future. That's exciting to me. It's not as exciting for me to design twenty games. That actually is not as exciting. I'd rather design. <laughs> four more games and, and spread it out, design maybe one every two or three years, make it awesome. Um, that to me is actually a lot more exciting than than pumping out a bunch of new games, than, than even exploring all of my ideas. I Because I know a lot of my ideas probably do not, uh, probably do, would not succeed on the tabletop. They're fun as ideas, but they don't actually work on the table. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. This has been a long one. Thank you. If you've, if you've stayed with me this whole time, thank you so much. And I really do look forward to hearing your thoughts and opinions in the comments. And uh, yeah, have a great Sunday. I'll see you on Tuesday for another video about uh, maybe Thieves. We'll see. We'll see. I played Thieves yesterday. really enjoyed it. Um, but we'll see what I, what I talk about next. Take care.